shall we pray heavenly father we're grateful for your presence and we think back upon your presence with the prophet when he stood there in that room when i was with him and many other times i know the same thing that he was literally terror stricken by your great and wonderful presence as you came to him and gave him instructions and gave him no doubt doctrine and showed him what a tremendous position of responsibility and fear there was before you in meetings lord when there were there's there was a prayer for the sick offered and how the pillar of fire appeared and he commented so often upon that sweet sweet spirit and so we realize this morning lord that the hour of darkness is past the hour of terror is past the hour of judgment is past now because we have the word which brings your sweet presence here and we are grateful that we are now within that hour of peace of promise of relaxing according to the word of almighty god which brother Branham said under the seventh seal there was that relaxation and we pray this morning we shall relax as never before we know we're doing it and yet we seem to have our own spirits and own personalities and traits and habits and those things get in our way may they be removed this morning and may we just enjoy the pure sweet word of almighty god and enrich our souls and be so that we can know the truth that sets us free and not just sets us free as though from error which indeed is the first great step but going far beyond it will one day set us free from this body of corruption and mortality corruptibility into incorruptibility and immortality and we should be like you lord that's a tremendous thing that cannot we cannot even begin to comprehend but we're you said it and that's sufficient and we're relying upon it in jesus name bless us this morning amen you may be seated now we are at number 20 i do believe in the uh, <clears throat> message of the seed of discrepancy and in this message uh brother branham is addressing the pentecostals and for uh, one of the last times because this was in 1965 in the spring he, or winter he is warning them the sin of organization which will separate them eternally from god bringing in a worthlessness and actually a debit of worship and service unto god and the barrenness of helping people even by gifts of the spirit and living a life of virtue because the word plainly declares that creeds of men taking the place of revealed doctrine and that's vindicated doctrine we're talking about now will bring them into the binding of the tares and destruction now you understand that's uh, quite a thing to set before the people this is actually a judgment message as well as a teaching message because brother branham is a vindicated prophet of god and this message is vindicated as taken from the bible in matthew 13 and as brother bread fulfilled at the end time which is now going on thus brother branham starts in genesis and goes through to Revelation to show them, that's the Pentecostals and the end-time Laodicean church age, the error of their ways of organizing and joining in church denominational councils which have already ended up in the world council of churches. Now the Pentecostals emphatically deny that, <clears throat> and Dr. Bell, who's now deceased, the, uh, that would be the uh, father-in-law of uh, Billy Graham, as I believe, he refused to withdraw his charge when the Pentecostals said he was lying. He said, I am not. They were there, I was there, and they are a part of it. And so you see, uh, let's understand this very, very flat. You can be led without even knowing it. You can be compromised without even your signature blind leaders of the blind entirely blinded to the light and wisdom of satan that he has placed in these men who purport to be messengers of almighty god so 
I'm taking my stand with Brother Branham, who by revelation would know it, <clears throat> and Dr. Bell, who by being present would know it, and also by my experience as having been Pentecostal, which kind of puts the cap on the climax, or the cherry on top of the whipped cream, you may say. Thus, Brother Branham starts in Genesis and goes through Revelation to show them the error of their ways of organizing and joining in with denominations, because you see what happens, they compromise themselves. Of course, it is not expected that these take kindly to the vindicated truth that they are of Cain and Balaam and Judas. They're the end, net result of the seed. <clears throat> and though they know sin is rampant, they'll not deny it. They cannot, with any pretense or any way, shape, and form, deny that sin is rampant as it has never been before, and that this is certainly the age of Noah and the ark. And though they know sin is rampant, they can't seem to realize that this age to which the Pentecostals belong will be overwhelmingly terrors. They're still out there mouthing the same bunch of hot air and lies that Satan said millions now living will never die. That's a lie straight from the pit of hell. It is 100% against scripture and it is stupid to read at the, that way that millions now living will never die when the word of God says in the days of Noah eight souls were saved only it's the same in this time it's the same as the bunch of funda fundamental so-called Trinitarians reading in Timothy there is one mediator between God and man the God Christ Jesus show me in your Bible where it says the God Christ Jesus I want to know I just simply want to know am I an idiot have I gotten through grade four not able to read that much then I might as well be dyslexic and read God and call a dog because you make God a dog dumb dog that can't even bark that's where these people are can't tell them anything <clears throat> there's no use because their ears have been deafened and their eyes have been blinded their hearts are gross with the same sin that they condemn which is unbelief and dead in their trespasses they they cannot believe that overwhelmingly there will be tares with only a few wheat as in the days of Noah now <clears throat> we want to start reading on page 12 in paragraph 63 and if Jesus predicted this age to end up in the greatest discrepancy there ever was now a discrepancy means there's something wrong in other words the totality of error and not only the totality of error as to numbers which on five and a half billion people minimum It goes beyond that to the extent of the depth of the lie which has been told, which strains to say, according to Brother Branham, as if I, as, as if I read him correctly, this age ends up with 99% truth and 1% error, which makes it the greatest lie ever, and that the spirit of error and the spirit of truth are only razor blade, blade edge apart. So the greatest deception is perpetrated upon the people so that it is very difficult to come to a position of white and black. The position is white with a slight tint. That's what you're looking at the one word off you know and so on and if Jesus predicted this age to end up in the greatest discrepancy there ever was <clears throat> the farthest apart from God in his worship and will and his ways and his service 
if it ever was in the 6,000 years, is going on now, and it seems that after these 6,000 years, we're finally coming to our senses to be the kind of people that God wants us to be, except for the lunatic fringe of every color, creed, and race that's out there as an abomination and a blot upon the people that they would say they represent. For all the drug heads and their plenty, their number is very few compared to those who are not drug heads and idiots. Though the jails are crowded, America still has 250 million people, of which I'm sure 240 million are outside of the jails. So you can see what you're looking at here. You're looking at what <clears throat> we would call, and Brother Branham would call, the paradox. The apparent contradiction. Yet it is the truth. How can this age go down in the darkness of sin and degradation? Five and a half billion people minimum. Yet at the same time, the true, pure, white light of God, and he himself delivering it through a vindicate it, is in our very midst today. And it cannot be denied except by those who want to deny and will deny, like Cain, in the face of the absolute obvious, and not only obvious, but proven. You say, Brother Vail, I, man, I don't understand that. Thank God I'm not of that crowd. That's what I say. Thank God I'm not of that crowd. Thank God and I saw that man. Something said, if you ever listen to any man, that's a man you will listen to. I'd like to hear from him just now myself in the resurrection, but that's up to God. <clears throat> but we're hearing from him now, and actually we're hearing from God in this particular sermon. So the greatest discrepancy that ever was the Laodicean church age, lukewarm. Now what in the world is lukewarm? That's when two temperatures come together and so blend they are one temperature. So that the cold loses its cold and the hot loses its hot. So now you have lost your integrity. You have lost what you stood for. You have compromised. So now the balances are that we can believe anything and get by with it. You follow what I'm saying? Because this is what I'm telling you. They've lost their integrity. Now integrity is a strange word in that I can use the word integrity concerning my body. <clears throat> if my shoulder is out of joint, it has lost its integrity. I think that's where you get maybe the word integration. I'm not quite sure. Dave's a better student of English than I am. See, integrity talks about wholeness. So the integrity now is lost, so they really belong to nothing. Sheep without a shepherd. And the devil comes knocking at the door. And he said, you ain't it that way anymore as your shepherd. He's the Pope. Protestants and Catholics and all have lost their integrity. <clears throat> now they will get a new integrity, which is a union, which is based upon the lie which says millions now living will never die. The very thing that Satan said to Eve, you shall not surely die, when God says you surely will die, the whole five and a half billion. And let me tell you something, when you talk about eight souls being saved in the days of known has categorically been proven statistics there were five and a half billion times at the time, billion people at the time of the flood. Now, Brother Branham's visitation as a prophet of God here on earth to meet the God of the prophets, who is his own prophet, who came down from Revelation 5 and 1 to Revelation 10 and 1, meeting with Revelation 10 and 7, and we understand absolutely that time's run out. <clears throat> 
So he said, you look, you lukewarm, Laodicean church, lukewarm. No integrity. <clears throat> no longer hot or cold. No way to take a stand that you once took. And if you do take a stand, it is a stand of shambles wherein you stutter, stumble, weave and waver, teeter and totter. Because you don't know. You've nothing to stand on. Now they claim they have. Because they get together as a council. <clears throat> And like the Sanhedrin before them who categorically stated when God has a problem he can't solve, he calls on us. When did God ever call on the Sanhedrin? When did God ever call on the Pope? When did he ever call on a synod? When did he ever call on a congregation? <clears throat> See, behold, I stand at the door and knock of any single man. Open that door. Only one man opened the door. Oh, say, bless God, we can all open the door. Well, you're all a bunch of liars. It's okay by me. That's the matter. You'll find out later on the prophet was the only man. <clears throat> the one and only man that could open the door, and God come in and sup with him and him with, with God. And they put him out of the church. That's the, the Laodicean age puts Jesus Christ out of the church. How can it be anything else <clears throat> but that discrepancy? Now he says, what you're looking at is from the beginning here that you see in Cain, the son of the serpent, that beguiled Eve, which means absolutely physically and morally seduced me, and she was with pregnancy, a child, by the union of that hellish sperm and her egg. <clears throat> When she said, he wholly, physically and morally and spiritually seduced me. And yet we have people running around who simply cannot take that. Then where do you find a just God in predestination? I would like to know. <clears throat> if I didn't understand serpent and know that to be the truth, <clears throat> I could not believe the Bible. Because the Bible says positively Satan has his children here. Where did they come from? The same way that God has his children. Through human instrumentality and man is a mammal. The highest form of animal there is. <clears throat> so the devil took the highest form of animal there was. He could think and he could speak. Very handsome devil. Great big tall bird. Giant. That's where the giants came from. And I can just see the, well, maybe I can, so I'll let that go. But I want you to see there's where the discrepancy came from in this hour. It had to come from some place. And it came, had to come through Cain because he turned down the vindicated revelation. And because his brother would not join with him. He, and at the end time, there's going to be a group formed that will kill anybody that does not join. <clears throat> Now then, where did it come from? It didn't come from Cain, so it had to come from Abel. Where did it, uh, rather, rather it didn't come from Abel, it came from Cain. See, even the devil wants to mix me up with that lousy terminology. It had to come from Cain, because Cain killed Abel. And the Bible distinctly says the devil was a murderer in the beginning, and you can't find one place where the devil personally himself murdered anybody because no spirit can have any control over anything unless it gets inside of an animate creation. It can get inside of a dog or a cat or a horse, but it likes to get inside of people. <clears throat> and the devil got right inside of the serpent and just took right over. That's where his offspring came from, and that's where murder came from. And the Bible said he was a liar from the beginning. And of course, he lied way by the ages that we understand them as now. <clears throat> but he said, that's a discrepancy. Certainly it is. It ends that age. What ends that age? The discrepancy, which is the greatest, the razor blade difference. Where people are entirely fooled by God allowing <clears throat> the Holy Spirit to operate amongst the filthiest 
unspiritual, devilish people just like Cain, just like Balaam, and just like Judas. Now remember that Balaam was a higher order than Cain, and remember Judas was a higher order than Balaam, even though he did not prophesy a prophecy which is still coming to pass. <laughs> He was a higher order because he was chosen as one of the twelve. Have I not chosen you twelve? And one of you is the devil, Diabolus. <clears throat> and here's the devil himself mouthing the praises of the Son of God and attesting to the fact with the rest of them that surely this is the Messiah and going about healing the sick and raising the dead and doing everything that Jesus himself did and the other eleven. Because you better believe he was not at that time in a corner and mumbling to anybody who'd listen and say, come over here, I'll tell you something. I'm raising the dead and casting out devils in Jesus' name, but don't believe that bunk that he is the Messiah. Brother Branham said Judas just thought he was a believer. <clears throat> and I wonder today how many people just think they're believers. And that extends even beyond the religion that we call Judaism and Christianity. How many Muslims are really Muslims? Well, to hear the true Muslim tell that he's the true Muslim, he's all for peace and love and honey and beauty. And he wouldn't cut nothing. And you've got the Shiites running around, they'll slit you ear to ear and take out your gizzard and feed it to the dogs. <clears throat> Shout glory, hallelujah. Great is Allah. What is it? Allah, Akbar, Akbar, Allah, whatever they say? I don't know, I'm not a Muslim. All right, <clears throat> this age ends. It was Cain and Abel again on Calvary. Now, Brother Branham says it was. Now, if he's talking about this age, should he not say it is? No. It's already happened. They've already crucified themselves, the Son of God in Hebrews 6. <clears throat> They've already made their choice. Brother Branham is trying to actually say sick him to a dead dog because the rabbit's going by. They can't hear. They can't see. Although if you took him to an ophthalmologist, he'd see your eyesight's 20-20, you're perfect. <clears throat> it was Cain and Abel again on Calvary. Hebrews 6, who crucified whom? <clears throat> we look at Hebrews, the sixth chapter, which is one of the great highlights of Brother Branham's ministry because therein God gave him a vision <clears throat> of this hour. And it says, it's impossible for those who were once for all enlightened and have tasted of the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost and have tasted the good word of God, even the powers of the world to come, have been away, never to be renewed to repentance again. For they crucified in themselves the Son of God afresh and put him to an open shame, which means they had to turn down the literal ministry of Jesus Christ <clears throat> which vindicated the presence of God and the presence of the prophet because God was literally in Jesus and Jesus did not have omniscience and he is still not omniscient. He never had omnipotence and he still does not have it. He was the Father in him instructing him. In fact, Jesus did not have a mind of his own and we are told not to have a mind of our own but to have the mind of Christ which came from God. These people out here try to make me Jesus only and say when I quote the prophet, Lee Vale's quoting himself. When I say there's two of them, the guy says, the preacher down there in the Carolinas, he said, see, Lee Vale said it. What Brother Branham said, trying to preach Brother Branham's sermons, his messages, trying to tell, you, tell people. What condemnation those men have. I can be condemned by every brother in this church, leave me. Every single one of you out that door. I'll just say, Hallelujah. Praise God. And I'll stand alone if I have to. But I can tell you one thing. I am not some stupid nincompoop who can't read. I can read. 
and I don't read between the lines. I can read my Bible and all the things the prophet said we can take right to this word because he preached this Bible exclusively, intrinsically. <clears throat> he did not waver for one minute and by the grace of God we won't hear. It says right here they cannot be renewed. They cannot be born again. There's no of starting over. There's no way they can learn. Their vision is sealed. Their ears have been stopped. But the strangest thing is they got motor mouths. They talk day and night of the spurious, of the lie. And they're doing it amongst the Branhamites, and don't tell me they're not. Don't tell me they're not. I know better. <clears throat> now, notice. As ever, as soon as Jesus went away, went into heaven, the Holy Spirit was sent back. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> he's talking about the day of Pentecost. Now, where was the Holy Spirit? He was in the upper chamber in a pillar of fire. And from him who is God, that Shekinah glory enveloping a little bit of God himself, came down upon each believer and continued to do so and still continues to this minute as far as we know. We just don't know when he stops. He is talking about the Holy Spirit coming down to make of many members, one body, even as Brother Bannon explained, David's 500 wives were actually one wife as far as God was concerned. Now, <clears throat> we want to notice here that at the end time, the same Holy Spirit, <clears throat> Elohim, who came later to Paul in the pillar of fire on the road to Damascus and met him in the desert and gave him the word. <clears throat> now, Paul tells us the same as Jesus and the same as Peter, warning us <clears throat> in Hebrews 6, which we read just a minute ago, of that crucifixion. And he tells, of us, tells us of it <clears throat> in 2 Thessalonians, the second chapter. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming, that's the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him. Now that's the truth right there. We're talking about presence. We're not coming about talking about coming. We don't know how he got here. We didn't even know when he got here. The only reason we know he's here is because he revealed himself and manifested himself proving who he was. <clears throat> it's the only way. So people that want to make that the coming are strictly wrong. That you soon not be shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word nor by letter as from us. In other words, there are going to be people writing spurious letters. As that day of the Lord, a day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except to come a falling away first. <clears throat> and the man of sin be revealed, the son of perdition. Now it tells you those are in apposition. The man of sin, the son of perdition. Now every time you have one of the twins, you have the second twin. There is no way you can ever have without the other. <clears throat> no way, no way, no way. When the Israel crossed over, was crossing to Palestine, God set a valley between two mountains, Gerizim and Abel. And the sons of Jacob, all 12 of them, were on Mount Gerizim and Mount Abel. And there was blessing and there was cursing. Now, there cannot be a son of perdition unless there is a son of man. And there cannot be a son of man 
unless there is a son of perdition. <clears throat> so it tells you right here in this scripture why Hebrews 6 is fulfilled. Because at the end time, there will be the evident manifestation of the son of man and the son of perdition. And the son of perdition was not revealed until the concluding ministry of the son of man when Jesus said, one of you is the devil, and he went out and betrayed. So the ministry of William Branham had to be in full swing of vindication. <clears throat> and the word of God absolutely delivered to us before these buzzards come on the scene. Now they were already there imitating him. But now the break is final. And the son of man <clears throat> ministry has left this earth with the prophecy, though the son of man minister, God himself is still here to lead us to the millennium. Now the rest are out there with all their claims, <clears throat> leading the people astray. And the best of Trin Trinitarian Pentecostals can produce is Benny Hinn, who decided there were nine gods. He tripled them up until the Pentecostal authorities brought him in and slapped him around a bit. God, he, he's their big boy. He's a, he blows on them and they fall down, healed their eyes up, healed, and you know, it's just, it's just a Barnum and Bailey circus. <clears throat> Barnum and Bailey couldn't do quite so good with See, actually God in gifts and ministries is turned loose in the devil's crowd. Sounds like a very strange thing, but it's right here. <clears throat> now it says this son of perdition will be revealed. Also will then the son of man who opposeth and exalts himself above all that is called God or that is worship. Now what is called God? One, two, three. Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. What else is called God? Jesus only. <clears throat> so you have the whole Christian uh, religion in a downright, complete, filthy mess. The Jesus only have a God of their imagination where Jesus is his own Father. What stupidity. And the Trinitarians have a Son of God with two fathers. Gee, how dumb can you get? That doesn't even happen in animals. Now you can go through some tricky splicing if you're a scientist, and no doubt you can cross a tomato with a bed bug or a lettuce leaf with a human sperm. I'm not saying you can't do it. And it's being done. That doesn't make it right. That doesn't make it God. Only vindication through a prophet makes it God. <clears throat> nothing else ever has and nothing else ever will. See, all that is called God, even the Shiites and the uh, Muslims, a whole bunch are going to be tricked into it. Why? Because you're not going to be screaming Akbar with a scimitar against the Pope when without him your belly is only full of wind and you and your kids are dying. You'll certainly think the second thought about El Akbar and Jim K bar and God knows what bar and whether it's the monkey bar or the... Sounds like the all God fell off of bar stools to you and you want to know the truth sits in the temple showing that he is God, <clears throat> forgiving sins. Well, that's going to make people feel real good. You're back to the old time of indulgences where Leo said, hey, you guys out there know you're going to sin. Give me the money ahead of time, then go out and do your sinning, and you're already free. You know, that's, that's a lot of wisdom right there because you sure bring the money in. But you know the strange thing about that is the fact that that's the way God did it. You were forgiven before you and I ever sinned. Because the Bible says we did not sin after the similitude of Adam's sin, but we're, we sin just the same. <clears throat> we're sinners. We're full of unbelief because of our reasoning power and all that junk that comes with it. All right, now. So remember also <clears throat> that as Cain said, join or die, and Abel died. And as Calvin 
brought Servetus before the Geneva Conference, and notice how you still got Geneva, the great peace sender, hogwash. And Calvin was responsible for the death of Servetus, who believed in one God and proved it by Scripture. And as Brother Branham said that Calvin was not full of the Holy Ghost, and that's sure the truth, as far as I'm concerned, as far as that's the truth, it is. <clears throat> and this fulfills 1 John, the third chapter, as we brought out before, but I'm bringing it out again because I'm fearful that maybe some of you were dozing, or you didn't catch it. <clears throat> And therefore, you're not truly alert to the truth of all this hogwash of love that's in the world. I've been aware of it for many, many years and preached against it, but this is what opened my eyes. There's nothing in, in under high heaven till I began looking at Brother Branham's message. And he says in verse 8, No, heaven, little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. Now, that's, that's a statement. So somebody is doing righteous even as he is righteous. Even as who is righteous? Jesus Christ is righteous. He's not talking about he's doing righteousness even as he is righteous, which means he's got a little, little bit of sin. He's got a lot of sin. He's got a lot of righteousness this time, that time, back and forth. No, 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 no. <clears throat> no. He's talking about sons of God and going to the fact of Jesus. You see, he that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him, and he cannot sin because he's born of God. Now it tells you right there, there are people who cannot sin. Now little children, let no man deceive you. He, <clears throat> uh, he that doeth righteousness is righteous. He that committeth sin is of the devil. And then it tells you right here, whosoever is born of God cannot sin because a seed remains in him. And he cannot sin because he is born of God. Now, you've got to take that back to the beginning. <clears throat> when God said to the Son who was formed and came forth when God begat his own child, his own son, that the scripture said is the outreign and the very image of the, and he's the very substance of God, and he was that image. In other words, he's an icon. He's not the real thing. He's a picture of it. And when you see this, you don't have to see the real thing because you can't see the real thing because it's sealed away in the vaults of the Louvre someplace. So somebody gets a picture and puts it out here and said, now look, like that's a picture of Brother Branham. That's not the real Brother Branham, but that's a picture. <clears throat> that's an icon, so to speak. Now, but when you go to Jesus, you're talking about something different. You're talking about what Paul says in Hebrews, the first chapter. So let's take a look at it. We've got all day to wander around, and I intend to wander around, so just, you know, relax. It says here, who being the effulgence or the outraying of his glory. In other words, a complete estimation of how you would estimate God, how you would draw his boundaries, how you would picture him, what you would know about him. You'll never know outside of this one. Because no man can see God. He that seen me has seen the Father. <clears throat> now that goes different ways. Just leave it. The expression of the express image of his person, or the express image of his substance, or the expression of his substance. In other words, whatever God was and is, is entirely expressed through this one that was of the substance of God. Now listen, I don't care if you put him in a human being. I don't care if you put him in a pillar of fire. I don't care if you put him in a glass of water or you put him in a brass doorknob. It doesn't bother me. See, I talk strange language to get the point home so you can see what I'm saying. This one is the Son of God, of the very substance of God, in a way that no one ever else has been or ever will be. And it was said of him, this day I have begotten thee, or started my generations in you. <clears throat> now that's what God said to his son. Huh? Okay. What does Ephesians say? Ephesians, the first chapter, says here, I get it for you. 
Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who blessed with all spiritual blessings in heaven and place, and as he, has co- co- as he, God, hath chosen us in Jesus before the foundation. All right, where was Jesus? He was in God, and he came forth, and God started his generations right there. <clears throat> Now the next thing is we were in him. We had to be a part of the generations. What was the next thing? Let us make man in our image. The Father and the Son were both there. Then God breathed into Adam the breath of lives and Adam became a living soul and that soul was a portion of the Holy Ghost because Brother Branham categorically said this was not an ordinary breath, a breeze. This was the Holy Ghost himself. And so therefore at that point when the Holy Ghost, that little particle, went into Adam and formed that germ, that soul, that was absolutely the Son of God, not the body now. Not the body, but that life in there. And now it's going to manifest through Adam and Eve, and God never said to Jesus, populate the whole earth. He said that to Adam and Eve. But he did say concerning Jesus, you're going to see your seed. They're going to have the whole earth under you. Uh, You just read uh, Isaiah carefully and go back over the series on spoken words, original seed, and you'll see a lot of things in there that people just deny flat, but I'm 100% sold. I've got the absolute 100% truth on it. Now it tells you right here that these children, whosoever is born of God, does not commit sin. Now, it doesn't say born again of God. It says you're born of God. In other words, to born means to issue forth from. And Brother Branham said, my eyes, my nose, my ears, who's me? That inner one, the Son of God, that soul. He also said you're in your father. So where was your soul? It was in your father, natural generation, natural election. Natural predestination. Who wants to believe it? Nobody but us kooks. We're a cult, you know. We're so stupid believing a hillbilly dumb William Branham because God gave gift and the stupid jackass idiot like everybody else. He got, got too big for his riches. And, oh, yeah. And the other guys aren't too big for their britches when they say God, they got the Holy Ghost and can talk like that and can't even compare to that man to his little finger. Ha! Huh. I'd say more like a hyena was their father, laughing all the way. And you know something? The hyena is the mortal enemy of the lion. Yeah, that's not just thrown in there for talk. That's the truth. Put it together. He that commits sin is of the devil. The devil sins from the beginning. Whosoever born of God does not commit sin. Why? Because God never sins in the beginning, and therefore we do not sin from the beginning. And Brother Branham said, you'll find you always were saved. You never did in the first place. You're the pure, justified, perfect, virgin bride of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that sin that you did in your flesh, the blood of Jesus Christ covers you. Then how can you be a sinner when the blood of Jesus Christ scatters sin? There'll be no evidence. Find the evidence. Oh, they'll point the finger and say this and that and the other thing. That doesn't mean one thing. Why? Because we've got a high priest. Now, there's Jesus' only bunch <clears throat> from the Trinitarian Branhamites. Where's their Jesus? Just like you know, because Brother Branham said, God gave you to me as God gave Aaron to Moses in his ministry. There were one or two people that decided I was some kind of an ironic priesthood and said, My God, you insult me. I don't want to go back to Aaron. I'm not related to Aaron. I'm not a Jew. I don't have a thing to do with the law. I'm under Melchizedek. So if you want to be nice to me, for at least for heaven's sake, give me that I would want to have done to me, which would believe I'm a son of God and belong to the Melchizedek priesthood in the particular sense that we're coming to temple worship pretty soon now in the millennium. That would be priests and kings unto God, or royal priesthood, even as Peter said. See, whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. That's absolutely right. His seed remaineth in, he cannot sin because he's born of God. And that sin came right down through your parentage. And we'll show you something about that in a minute. 
In this, I hope anyway, in this the children of God are manifest the children of the devil. Whosoever doth not righteousness is not a God. Doeth not righteousness. Now tells you up here, he that doeth righteousness is righteous. See? Now, let's keep reading. Not as Cain was that wicked one who slew his brother, <clears throat> and wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil and his brother's righteous. <clears throat> Now, the evil work <coughs> was misdividing the word and wrong sacrifice and forcing himself upon God to worship God. And God would not receive him. In fact, God said, look, I'm going to give you a second chance. He didn't want a second chance. Do you realize that goes all the way to the lake of fire where the devil and his gang rise up and descend upon the holy encampment and try to take over God in the heavens and the earth? Brother, sister, if you don't understand the law of Alpha and Omega, you better begin to understand it. Because you ain't going to get anywhere until you understand it. I just applied it again. <clears throat> He said, we're going to take you over. If I can't take you over, I'll kill you. And he killed him. <clears throat> Why did he kill him? <clears throat> over Cain, I beg your pardon, Abel receiving a true definitive revelation of the word and believing it and abiding in it at that particular point. Though down the road, I'm quite sure that Cain, I mean rather Abel, would have got in some mischief because every man and woman that's born always got into mischief. Now you know I'm telling you the truth. King David got so far that he could covet his neighbor's wife and commit adultery and have a baby buyer and kill her husband. He knew what he was doing every step of the way. <clears throat> he knew what he was doing. But he was not serpent seed. Just got too big for his own thinking, what have you. Cain was of the wicked one and slew his brother. And wherefore slew he him? Because his own works were evil. What was his evil work? Worshiping God outside the word and in the face of a true revelation and denying and said, I won't take it. <clears throat> and I won't let the other fella take it. And if he won't listen, I'll kill him. They killed him. Marvel not, my brethren, that the world hate you. Now, just a minute, he said in here, he that hateth his brother. <clears throat> he, now listen, let's face this. Cain was Abel's half-brother. You know something? Right today, the Jews take their ancestry from their mothers. What a stupid, crazy, idiotic thing. And they say the reason for it was that the, that the women were raped so many times by invasions and, you know, these scuzzy men that will be annihilated in the lake of fire pretty soon. A thousand years ago, like that, you know. <clears throat> and so they said, because the Jewish women had these babies, we'll give them a Jewish ancestry, hog wash. That's why Morris Sorella says, I'm a Jew, and Brother Branham says, he ain't no Jew, he's Italian. And Brother Branham denied anybody having the right to call themselves a nationality or anything else after their mother when it's after the father. Because you were in your father's loins. I'd like to have, see a woman have a baby without a man or some kind of intervention, even if it's an artificial fertilization. I don't care how they do it, they're not going to do it. Or they could get her egg and they could put, take a, you know, a sperm of a bull calf maybe or some, bring out some science can do anything stupid they're going to do it and they're destroying the earth by doing and God will destroy them to destroy the earth come on see listen your Bible is so perfect <clears throat> it is so true and the integrity of every scripture lies in there in such perfection that it is one body of glorious marvelous truth that unfolds before us Just like you got three layers of skin, I think, don't you? Epidermis and this dermis and that dermis. I don't know. I'm not a doctor. 
you start going through tissue, <coughs> you'll find layers. Go through even a cell, you'll find layers. Start going through the universe, you'll come to the atom, and you'll come to the pro, the what is the neutron, proton, and the the bran, and the chaff, and the oats, and the wheat. I don't know what you get. See, marvel not <coughs> that the world hates you. <coughs> it tells you right there that buddy off thy one word is the world, and Brother Branham made that absolute statement that I'm making this morning. One word off is the world. <coughs> now then, there are brothers according to our mothers. Yep. I'm not good at finding scripture, you know that. I ought to have somebody here that really knows how to find it. But you know, don't sell me too short. I'm actually five foot eight, not five foot six. <clears throat> yeah, where is that anyway? Oh yeah, my little children whom to travail in birth again to Christ be formed in you. I desire to present be present with you and to change my voice, for I stand in doubt if you tell me you that desire to be under the law, do you not hear the law? For it's written, Abraham had two sons, one by the bondmaid and the other by a free woman. Huh? But Jerusalem, Mount Zion, which is above me, which is our mother. The translation says mother of us all is a wrong translation. But it's a translation the world uses. We're all one. Hallelujah. And it's proven we all got one mother, but it's now been proven we ain't all got one father. Hallelujah. Amen. Cain is not my father. No, no way. <clears throat> no way. No. For it's written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not, and cry thou that travailest not, for the desolate have many more children than she which hath her husband. Who's desolate? The concubine. Sarah's handmaid. Eh? Who had the husband? Sarah did. Didn't have one child till God intervened. Abraham got carried away, and boy, we're paying the price right now with all those Arabs and everybody else running around, all the Esau's and God knows what. Esau's Ishmael's. How many of you think really ever come to God out of that bunch? Well, if, if they're part of the five and a half billion and eight people make the ark, I want to ask you a question. How many, how many do you think are going to come? Oh, Brother Peter, I'm going to pray him in. Well, go ahead and pray. Twist God's arm. He'd even give you a great big fat revival. Now, all the altars filled and you think, oh, hallelujah, they're all getting, oh, speaking in tongues. This is God. This, well, certainly it's God. He's just fooling you because you will not go to the Word. Your head's too big for God. Your mouth is too big for God. And your ears are too small for God. Your eyes are blinded. Marvel not that the world hate you. One word off. <clears throat> now when they start the first stage with another Jesus, another gospel, another spirit, how far are they off? The story is they ain't on. They haven't been on. You say, just a minute, how come through all the ages we've got some people saved? Because of election. And the divine purpose of God. <clears throat> That's how. Simple as ABC. Those that are born of God never do sin. We know we pass from death unto life <clears throat> because we love the brethren. Yeah. We know we pass from death unto life. We know we're born again. <clears throat> we know that germ in us, that soul, has been, aw been awakened unto Almighty God because we love the brethren. Why did Brother Branham express it? How can you not help but love each other, you that love this word? Now let's say that we're right. And you better, I'll knock you on the head. No, I'm not kidding, you know that. Sort of wake you up <clears throat> and tease you a bit. The fact is, I am preaching what I believe, what I have got to preach because I cannot see any sense in anything else and I cannot see this beautiful glow of love. Can't see it. I'm completely impervious to it. I've been fooled so many times by nice guys. They come to me and I get this feeling in my heart and say, watch that guy, watch that guy, watch that guy. And then they treat me so nice, you know, to chocolate bars and ice cream cones and 
say so many nice things that I get carried away with their sweet plaver, and pretty soon I'm hand in glove with them, and the next thing I find I'm, oh God, what they're into, two souls and female Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is the worship of Sophia. You read that in your papers, the Presbyterian church women are worshiping Sophia. And the agnostic said there was a female God above God who said, shut up, big the one that created you. I want to know, I want to get some answers. Give me where the prophet said it. <clears throat> Give me the scripture. You can't do it. Can't do it. How could a female Holy Ghost quicken somebody? The quickening comes by two acts. One by the Holy Ghost himself falling upon the word that is lying dormant, the soul that is lying dormant. And the second one is, is bringing the revelation of the word to that one which was dormant. You say a woman can do that. I say you're crazier than a hoot owl. Oh, pardon me, hoot owl. I didn't mean to involve you in such blasphemy. I got nothing against the hoot owl unless he's outside of my window awake. And even then I praise God, at least there's one hoot owl left. <clears throat> Keep me company, so to speak. Look, you cannot, you cannot be that kind of a, a believer and get away with it before Almighty God. So what are we finding here? Whosoever hateth his brother <coughs> is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal at the beginning. Now this speaks of the churches, the women that are bearing children. Because they have a mother. The mother is Jerusalem, which now is, which is a place of blasphemy where the Pope will sit. Now, right now, we know Babylon is Rome. But we know positively that Jerusalem is the central point of worship. And we know there's going to be a lot of problems over there. I don't know about everything, but I know one thing we're looking at. The, I'm going to be over there, and I'm going to be the head of the three monotheistic religions. <clears throat> and what the Pope says, I'm inclined to believe, because I, he's, he's, he's speaking for the devil. And the devil has full reign right now, because the son of man came on the scene, and the son of perdition followed, and they all ran to the son of perdition. They have crucified to themselves, they have nailed themselves to the cross, and to the lake of fire, and that's it. It's already judged. <clears throat> it's over. That's what Malachi 4 is all about. But you can't tell people white throne is on. No, 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 Brother Bale, that's thousand years down the road. Oh, my God, that's merely the execution, the carrying out. The judge has judged. The trumpet's blown. The lion has roared. Who, who can withhold himself from speaking? The, prophet can, the prophet's not going to speak. <clears throat> so he says right here, A murderer hath no eternal life abiding in him. See, hereby we perceive... We, we love, I perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. <clears throat> now what did, the, what did the one guy do? Cain, he, he didn't lay his life down for his brother, he killed him. <clears throat> now Brother Branham categorically said there's different ways to kill a person. You don't bung him on the head of the hammer, blow his head off with a shotgun, you can destroy his reputation. Hey, that ain't nothing. What about if you destroy his soul? by a perverted word. Now, Brother Branham brought that out. <clears throat> he brought it under Catholicism. <clears throat> They're dealing in the souls of men. Yeah, I'm dealing in the souls of people right here today, and I know it. I know it full well. And I'm going to tell you flat that all this love that's out there that isn't with the word is a lot of hogwash. And we who claim to really love this word, we have so much lacking we stink. And I can say, eight can make the ark. There's too many lying just in wait to needle. There's too many lying just in wait to fight back. <clears throat> and I'm 81 years old. I don't have, I've overlived my time. And I'm just learning a little bit, just a tiny, tiny bit of what it is to enjoy being stabbed in the back. But I still fight like the devil, too. I get mad in a hatter. I'm not perfect. Perfect idiot, maybe, something like that. <clears throat> but you see what ecumenism is, ecumenism, 
<clears throat> all these daughters come together from this Jerusalem, which is Mount Sinai. Bondage. Do this, do that, listen here, listen there, do this, do this, listen here, listen there. <clears throat> Our mother is the New Jerusalem or Zion, which is a spiritual habitation made up of us with the Lamb on the throne and Almighty God in the pillar of fire above the throne. And it has everything to do with reality of God himself because it all came from God and it all went back to God. And when it all went back to God, that's what it looked like. The Lamb on the throne and the pillar of fire above the throne and the great twelve gates of the city serried up there in a pyramid with all the bride there and the 144,000 as the, what you call the servants of the bride and the rest bringing their glory <clears throat> that's found in Genesis and completely pictured in Revelation I've showed you different times I'm just talking about it this morning now <clears throat> So therefore, we have no place for this pseudo-love and this constant quoting. Well, Lee, they may be right, but I sure don't like his spirit. How can a man, I'm full of the Holy Ghost and have so much wrong with him, have so much right? It's the same thing they said about Brother Branham. We oh, he couldn't be right. I'm going to tell you something. I could be wrong and very wrong and even miss hell by 40 miles. But whatever pleases God concerning me, I'm pleased with on the grounds that I've realized that he is God and he's sovereign, which not even one thousandth of one percent realize. So if I've gotten that far, <clears throat> I think I can praise him and say that will be done. I don't do much. But at least I want to be in that particular category. And notice as ever as soon as Jesus went away, went into heaven, the Holy Spirit was sent back. Absolutely sent back as the great baptizer. That was the seed, the life giver unto the word. Now, <clears throat> Brother Branham used that word seed there. And instantly, because we think of seed in terms of the soul itself, it gives us pause to think and we would say then that baptism with the Holy Ghost whereby we are born again <clears throat> that little measure of the Holy Spirit is the seed well what if he doesn't mean seed in the sense of the soul and the point is how could he mean the soul when you already got a soul is that why the two soul people say you got to have the old dead because brother Brandon said the old soul dies and yet he said, the soul is the nature of the spirit, giving it an atmosphere. Then if the soul is only a nature, then it is not an entity. It's only a nature. It's an emanation. And if the spirit is not of God, but allowed of God, then I wouldn't have that soul. I wouldn't even want that soul. So I ain't got nothing. Now I go straight to doctrine. Where Brother Branham went right to Genesis all the way through. He said, you were in your father's loins. <laughs> And he wanted fellowship. <clears throat> and through sacred marriage, uh, uh, what do you marriage and the sacred sacred marriage and the in the bedding ground in the holy of holy matrimony that well is that you know through holy matrimony, you came forth, your mother's a part of your father, and you are a part of your father, you're all part of each other. Word, 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 word. And that's the way it can go. <clears throat> Spiritually, that's the way it does go. For I'm looking at this as Brother Branham said, he poured water on the sea. So he could have said that was the water, <clears throat> the life giver unto the word, as we spoke last night. Okay. Now, is he saying here the Holy Spirit has two direct missions? <clears throat> One is to bring the disobedient lamb back to himself in the rebirth by the baptism with the Holy Ghost. And the same Holy Ghost baptism 
will water that word that God gives so the revelation can be yours and you live as the word. Now, let's explore this a little bit <clears throat> because I am not going to stand up here as any kind of authority with the final word on this. I'm just looking at it. And I'm talking about it. And we're looking at First Peter. We're looking at the first chapter. And uh, well, might as well read 22. Seeing you're purified, you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit. Now notice, you can't obey the truth except through the Spirit, because you can't get the truth except by the Spirit, and you can't obey except by the Spirit. Come unto unfeigned love of the brethren. Now, see, that backs up John. <clears throat> it's not this feigned love. It's the love of God shed abroad in your hearts by the Holy Ghost, and the conduit is the Word, and you are the conduit of the Word. The conduit of the Holy Ghost is the Word, you are the conduit of the Word. Your body thereby makes a temple, making threefold. So therefore there will be a conduct come forth. There will be a life there. Because you are truly born again and have the quick revelation. You won't be lighting candles and being worried about Friday the 13th and not walking on a crack or under a ladder or seeing a black cat and running and all that kind of junk. <clears throat> or you won't look in the refrigerator and, you know, the light's on and something good and if that lights off or something bad. There'd be no opening in your Bible like a ru Bible roulette. You won't be a whole kooky pooky idiots. You go to the Word. What does the Word say about it? That's all I want to know. What's the Word say? That ends it. <clears throat> see, that's what we're coming to. Now, see that you love one another pure heart fervently. Now, where do you get, now listen, where do you get the pure heart? Seeing you purified your souls in obeying the truth of the Spirit unto the unfeigned love of the brethren as you want. See that you love one another pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible spora, but of incorruptible. In other words, not being born again by the lead of your lineage. That's exactly what the Nicodemus said to Jesus. Can I enter in my mother's womb the second time and be born again? And Jesus said, oh, shut up. I expected more of you than that, a ruler in Israel talking such gibberish and gunk. He said, you know people get born again. Gentiles become Jews. Israel. Through a certain process, <clears throat> which is complete immersion in water and rising and now have become a part of a new tribe, a new, uh, the tribe. Rahab and everybody would have to go through that. That's history. And Jesus said, oh, brother, no wonder the Sanhedrin's cooped up. You're a ruler, and that's the kind of gunk you're trying to take from my words. A man be born again into his mother's womb. Nicodemus, don't you know your lineage as it is? Your parent is rotten. You wouldn't be standing here before me if you didn't recognize the rottenness of your lineage. I'm talking about lineage. No, you're not that lineage, no. You're going to be born again through the lineage that you really come from from the beginning. You're going to be born again by the Holy Spirit <clears throat> that was responsible for your soul, being born again. Not a corruptible, but of incorruptible. By the word of God which liveth and abides forever. Now, just a minute, brother, sister. It tells you right here that the begotten has to do with your lineage. Right. Now, for all flesh is as grass, see? <clears throat> You're going to die. You're born to die. All the glory of man, the assessment of man, the furthest you can get is he's going to die. I don't care who he is, what he is. As one poet said, this, this shepherd's uh, crook will lie by the monarch's scepter in the day, in the grave, six feet under dirt. I don't care who you are, you're going to die. All flesh is as grass. The glory of man is the flower. That's the best you can assess. Forget it. Born to die. The grass withers. My parents died. I'm going to die. But the word of the Lord endureth forever. Now listen. And this is the word which by the gospel is preached unto you. Now listen to me carefully. Therefore repentance, therefore repentance is the word. Got a weak amen there, but it's all right. Let's go over it again. 
Repentance is a change of mind, right? Change of mind, why? I'm going to be a good boy. I'm going to be a nice girl. Ain't going to smoke no more. Commit a doctor no more. Smoke a joint no more. See you no more. I'm be a nice person. Yep, 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 yep. Won't cover my neighbor's wife. So and so and so and so. Well, that's a little bit better. But you cannot repent outside of the word of Almighty God. Which comes to you in the meagerest, barest <clears throat> revelation. But nonetheless a revelation. And it hits your mind. And you say, that's right. I'm lost. The only solution is Jesus' blood. I got to get born again, got to get saved, got to get right. And you're quoting the word right down the line because that is the gospel. <clears throat> See, your mind is going through the process. The mind hands it over to the spirit and the spirit to the soul. The soul begins to rejoice in God its Savior. So now repent. Listen to the word. Listen to the word. Here's what it says. Here's what I'm teaching you. Listen to it. Obey it. Now we come to the water. I've done the two things God said I'm supposed to do. The next thing is up to God and he does it. Now the Holy Spirit comes in and your soul is quickened and joined right back to God and quickened to the word of God that you must learn as you go down the road. And if you turn down the road, even have a spoken in tongues, and you turn away from that truth which is revealed. You never got a genuine baptism with the Holy Ghost. You never truly repented. You were not born of God. And your water baptism is a farce. And you will be held accountable for it. Better that man not have known. Or thought he knew. Our other sister is day by day putting the crud out of our minds. How? by putting the light and the life in there. You know how you get rid of mildew, which is a curse in this age? Turn the light on. Let the sunlight rise. It's the best thing there is in the world. Get rid of mildew. Mildew is always where it's dark and damp. That's the brain. Huh? Or else it'll go right to the bloodline. Candida, candida, candidiasis. The fatigue syndrome. Oh my, what a future there is for us in the millennium. I can't wait for it, although I got it. I don't think jumping off a cliff would be the answer. I wouldn't get there any quicker because I'd have to go to the grave and then come out and then I would lose rewards for having cut my life off for not being God. So I'm just going to stick with what I'm supposed to stick with, which is to know you people. Now notice as ever, as soon as Jesus went away into heaven, the hope was sent back. <clears throat> that was the sea. <clears throat> and I believe that's the water. That's that life. Now notice he said the life giver unto the word. So there's two things I got in mind here. Born again. In order to be joined back to God. To awaken that soul. To quicken it. So that you can really get into the word now. Because the quickening by the word to repentance and water baptism. To lead you to the Holy Ghost is what we want here. Piling word upon word upon word upon word. See. <clears throat> That was the seed, the life giver under the word as we spoke last night. It's the one that quickens the word. Now we're talking right there. Brother Branham also said that's a part of the word in here. So you get quickened in here, quickened back to God, made alive to receive the word, the truly revealed word, to everything therefore you do is righteous. And everything anybody else does, one word unrighteous. And they will end up killing you. I don't care how they love you and smirk and come around and say, I went to the cell where the, do the man had raped my daughter and he killed her. And I went and threw my arms around him and cried and hugged him. We came to Jesus. He might have been my mamma. If you led him to three gods in a Trinitarian baptism, I doubt very much his salvation. I doubt very much anything. Or oh, say, Brother Bill, you're not nice. Aha, I caught you. That's the whole thing I'm talking about. I am not nice to the devil's crowd. I will not stand here and not defend the gospel. I don't have to be crude. That's my privilege. I mean, it's not my privilege, but I'm a little crude. 
But that's all right. You can take crude oil and refine it and <clears throat> get somewhere. All right. Quicken means brings to light. Now, <clears throat> let's just take a look at this. Quicken means to bring to light. And if you take the root words, you'll find it's a one act and a one act only. Preacher had a sad experience like mine. I one day was very foolishly said to a church bunch of people in church because I knew we had some young people there that might have just been baptized perhaps and so on and uh, hadn't had hands laid on to receive the Holy Ghost and didn't understand anything about the Holy Spirit. And I said, well, if there's anybody here that like hands laid on to receive the Holy Spirit and some of you young believers and you know that you just come in the message and and you, you know, you have, you're wondering about certain things. <clears throat> you come forward. The whole church came forward. That's the last time we ever did it. And I thought, merciful God, if every time Brother Branham talked about salvation, I ran to the altar like I see people do. Say, what have I got? What have I got? I'm not a Nazarene. Sanctified today and unsanctified the more because something flipped across my mind. It's all blipping across my mind. That's like the Chinese that said, you can't stop the birds flying through the trees, but you can stop them building nests. <clears throat> See, that's the truth. See, the genuine Holy Spirit, you know, he said, quickens means brings to light. See, so what does it do? The quickening is there for the two purposes. To quicken you to God by the Holy Spirit, to quicken you to the Word, which now the Holy Spirit begins to reveal to you. And the life of that word begins to get manifested. And it's got to get manifested, first of all, on your lips. Because if you don't confess the Lord Jesus Christ, you ain't got no Savior. What's that? Romans, what chapter is that? I won't hear any answers, so I've got to find it myself. I think it's 10, isn't it? 10 chapter Romans. For the first six, but the righteousness which is faith speaketh on this wise. Say not in thine heart, who shall ascend to heaven? That's to bring Christ down. Who shall descend to the deep? That's bring Christ up. But what says it? The word is nigh thee. What word? The word of faith. Even in thy mouth and thy heart. Notice mouth first, then heart. See? That is the word of faith which we preach. Brother Brown said, Taste say only what I say. Paul said the same thing. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thine heart that God that raised the dead, thou shalt be saved. So there you are. For with the heart man believes to righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Now you see, you believe to righteousness, and confession is made to your salvation. What are you saved from? <clears throat> You're saved from the old mind. See? The old sense nature. Oh, the bride's got a long way to go yet. I really believe that, but God can do it overnight. <clears throat> see? Quicken means brings to life. The genuine spirit only, now watch, only brings to life the word that it is. It won't bring a creed to life. It can't because it's nothing of the creed. The Holy Ghost has nothing of a creed. It's the life of the word of God for it is God. <clears throat> In other words, there's nothing you can have from God or know about God under any shape or form unless you have that word for it. So God in his word is one. Sure he is because he thoroughly describes himself and the whole of, the whole of God is, is in his word. You cannot tell God. You cannot tell the nature of God. You cannot tell anything of, about God except that he is a creator by looking at creation. And <clears throat> you can also know that he could be fairly omnipotent because his creation doesn't bow to anybody. Everybody bows to creation. So we put him down and say, well, I believe God could be omnipotent. Well, it's the omniscient. No, I don't think he's that really. See, you, you can't. Outside of this word, you cannot have God. And that's why God in his word is one. And that's why it's the, <clears throat> the uh, Rima Logos, where these other birds go haywire. They don't believe it's Rima Logos. Brother Brandon preached the Rima Logos. So did John. And they, they want me to listen to their clap, trap, and balderdash. What beautiful English words. Maybe they even heard them in Jamaica. I heard them in Canada. Well, you don't mind me just teasing you a little bit. 
the genuine Holy Spirit, the genuine Holy Spirit, the genuine Holy Spirit. True baptism. Not just a quickening anointing, not just an anointing. The <clears throat> Holy Spirit only brings to life the word that it is. It won't bring a creed to life. Can't. Because it's nothing of the creed. It condemns it. It is the life of the word of God, for it is God. Who's God? The Holy Spirit. And he's in that word. When that word manifests, you see God. Now you can see God, I'm using that term, in the sense of the, the more loose definition. Not as in Jesus and a prophet. <clears throat> see? And it quickens that body. Now, what does he mean he quickens that body? Well, the body of the Holy Spirit's got to be the Word. <clears throat> and uh, Paul tells you emphatically, over here in Romans 8 chapter, he says, for to be carnally minded is death. In verse 6, be spiritually minded is life and peace. So therefore, the mind has got to hand to the spirit down to the soul and back again. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be the spirit of God dwell in you. In other words, you don't qualify for that low bar position. You qualify for the high. Now, if you, any man have the Spirit of Christ, have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. In other words, you're, I don't come any bap, you're baptized with the Holy Ghost. <clears throat> and I don't care if you're William Branham. And I don't care if you're the Apostle Paul rolled into one. They're both dead. Huh? Amen. You and I are going to die too. I don't care how full of the Holy Ghost you are. The body's dead because of sin. You're going to die. That's what God spoke to Adam in the garden. The day of eating, you're of dying, thou to surely die. And Adam died in 930. He missed the 1,000 and nobody lived it. But we will live it, hallelujah, and we'll live beyond it. <clears throat> the body's dead because of sin, but the spirit is life because of righteousness. I'm going to go to him, to the body that's waiting for me. But if the spirit that raised up Jesus the dead dwell in you, that uh, he that raised up Christ the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. <clears throat> so you got the promise of the quickening. So in here, I'm not going to go either direction as though I, I'm going to tell you I've got a perfect understanding of what Brother Branham is saying here. I know one thing, that the body of the Word can only be, the body of the Holy Ghost, which is the conduit or the Word, can only be quickened by that life itself. <clears throat> and if that Word is not there, the Word, the life of God will not come into it. Now you can have all kinds of gifts of spirit, but that's not the same thing. Hmm. You have all kinds of Bible, read it day and night and quote oh, the, whole, the whole thing from Genesis to Revelation. You can still go to, to the grave and death. See, and it quickens the body. <clears throat> it also quickens the entire body of Christ. The dead are going to come out of the ground. We're going to be changed. We're going to be caught up to the wedding supper. And that spirit that's amongst it becomes incarnate to us. We're, cr we're crowned king of king and lord of lords. How much time we got? Five minutes? Well... Now notice, as they did, then as the Bible said, and John spoke to his children, little children, you have heard the, of Antichrist which was to come in the world. Now Brother Branham said this is an end time message. Huh? So this applies to the Laodicean church and everybody in this age, all five and a half billion people in the world. Antichrist was to come to the world, waiting in the world and working in the children of disobedience. Not disobedient children now, but the children of disobedience. The big thing entirely. Now that was all along about 30 years after the coming of the Holy Ghost. We find when the Holy Ghost came to the real seed, the real life giver to the seed. Now notice again, you see, his, his language goes back and forth. So I can't tell you what he's got in his mind. I wish I could. But his language goes back and forth. The real life giver to the seed. <clears throat> then here comes the discrepancy again. And notice, it went on. Now we're going to stop there, but you'll notice that Brother Branham tells you what he tells you in the church ages and the seals, that every age starts with the truth. <clears throat> Every age. <clears throat> then error comes in. 
God lays away his faithful messenger in death and judges that age. Then another messenger comes at the end of the age, starting the second age. Bringing the truth. <clears throat> and you'll notice each age was less and less. Until Brother Branham gave us the truth of the bride tree. Now we're right back to the first age. And you tell me there's no true fivefold ministry? <laughs> you tell me the gifts of spirit and those things, healing and all those things aren't in operation somewhere, somehow? <clears throat> so Brother Bill, let's have a church full of Brother Brandon said I may prophesy one time and never again. What about that? Better be somebody standing at the door with the turning spirits. And I'm not just trying to sneak out of this thing. I want, I want the real thing or I want nothing because I was involved in Pentecost, Latterine, the whole schmear. I'm not going back. Who? I'm not going back for gift. I'm going to stick with this word. Gift or no gift, I'm sticking with the word. Anyway, I'm not called to gifts anyway. Anybody as you are. I'm called to the pulpit and ministry teach. That's right. All right, let's rise and be dismissed. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we thank you again for allowing us to come together to get a couple paragraphs here uh, and concerning the truth of what is in your word to repeat it, lest the people not get the full truth and understanding what we have in mind. And Lord, we pray now at this time that by your Holy Spirit you will seal it into their minds and into their spirits and down into their hearts to know what really true love is and to aim for it and believe that the bride will have true love toward brethren not hatred toward anybody, but that love will be there. And not trying to this and that and the other thing, which we see on so many, many different hands and skills, but to, but to bring forth what you want and what you've said in your word is to come forth, which is what we know can come forth and should come forth. Where we've sinned, Lord, forgive us. Where we've been grievously wrong, forgive us, Lord. We know we've been set on a true path of revelation, and there will be fruit, Lord. We know it will be your kind. Of, it, it'll be what you want in the church, whatever power and manifestation that would be there should, would, can come to us because this is Ephesus returned, as Brother Branham said. And there's not a thing said about gifts in that, that at all. was said about the word, which is now bringing us to complete headship. And we see now where the gifts are. They've gone to seed and they're taking people away. And their own Lord, we know they're only, in many cases, they're only so-called gifts. They're just impersonators, imposters, impersonators pretending that they got gifts, no more discernment than nothing. We know that. We've seen it, we hear it all the time. But so Lord, if there's anything that you want us to have in any way, shape, and form that accrues to this word that comes forth, then blessed Holy Spirit, we want you to work within our hearts through the name of the Lord Jesus Christ to bring forth what you want to be brought forth, no matter what it costs or takes, because we know that it's the rewards are so mighty and so wonderful that the future is so grand and so glorious that for us to think in any other way than to walk in the light and believe and desire and receive and any way manifest that which is in the word of this hour, that is all we really want, we should want, and we do want. And may we not be fearful, Lord. May we not for one minute ever hesitate to believe that this is ours, it's all ours, it's ours because you paid the price for it and you gave it to us and demonstrated to us. You showed us the path of truth and the path of error. You told us these things and you pounded the nail and clenched it. And we're glad, Lord, that we don't have to rely upon anything that's a man, but rely wholly and solely upon the truth that has been given to us, vindicated. Now, Lord, that's all we, we want. We want to have that word in us substantially say word upon word whatever part or wholeness of the whole thing you want us to have that it be ours and our lives be commensurate to us to it in the sense that we are bringing forth lord what you want to be brought forth not what we think or anybody else thinks but what your word says and may there be a humbling and a bowing down to it so that you have the glory and the honor by a people who serve you in spirit and in truth now, Father, heal the sick amongst us and help us to have more strength and more a nobility of soul and more desire to help. And any impediment or anything that would impede anybody, as Brother Branham said, there's a bride out there and by the grace of God won't get her in her way. 
Help us not to get in anybody's way whatsoever, but to stand out of the way that your, you, our living God, may have the glory and the honor, you by your Holy Spirit, you're fulfilled in people's lives as we want in our own lives. This is what we humbly pray this morning, Father, and may we be dedicated as never before to it, that you might receive some little honor and glory, Lord, for such from such a poor people. Now unto the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be all honor and power through Jesus Christ our Savior. Amen. Take the name of Jesus with you. Take the name of Jesus with you.